Today, inshallah, we'll talk about Surah Al Zuhruf, which is number 43 in the Quran. And uh, just because I see new faces here, what is uh, what is these three talks that I gave on the whole Quran, and we we did it all of the uh, all of the surah until we now in this surah, and we go every week talk one. And what we do, or what I try to present, is I look to the surah, and try to focus in one theme that I said this is the main theme in the surah, and but recognize that the Quran is actually the teaching of the Quran does not follow a linear system. It follow what you call a circular or a spiral system, which I discussed it before. A spiral system, that means every surah have almost all of the basic things that Allah wants to do, all of the different themes. And then, but, so you, if you look at it, so I'm not giving tafsir because you look at every surah and would have a lot of other subjects. But I'm trying to say, okay, if I try to pick one, which is the, what is this one? And uh, I always encourage people who attend, I said, look, what I come with and find, maybe you come with a different one. There is no, you know, you know, basically absolute right or wrong around in here, because as I said that this, you know, in this is it's not a tafsir session, it's just a reflection in a theme. And I'm hoping actually at the end, after we finish the whole Quran, I go and pick every theme and then expand on it from all of the different ayat in the Quran. And this is why you notice that in any time I use a surah, I do not want I do not want to use ayat beyond it, just to focus in this in this surah. So the theme in, in Surah is Zuhruf is really that is, a, is related to the material distraction. That, you know, though these are enticing, you know, you all see people wealth and, you know, fame and, you know, glory and position and so on. All this, these are enticing. But we have to know the surah emphasizes to us that these are transient and they should never divert us from the true path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then the surah also warns us about those who turn away from the path of Allah, Allah's guidance, or rejected a message, they always rejected by clinging on the excuses that they are more wealthy, their worldly position, and their perceived superiority. 
They said, who are you to tell me something? I am more wealthy than you. I am in a higher position than you. I am superior than you. So they rejected the message, not in the merit of the message, but because they think they are superior than the deliverer of the message. And that is a key issue also that you notice in this. And the surah started with, by to emphasizing the greatness of the Quran. It's, you know, and this is, you see it in all of the surah that start with Hamim. Hamim wal kitab al mumin inna ja'allahu Qur'anan arabiyan la'allakum ta'qilun wa innahu fi umm al kitab ladayna la'aliyan hakim. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say Hamim, these are two letters, by the clear book, which is a Quran, verily, we have made it Quran in Arabic that you may be able to understand and verily it is with us in the mother of the book, indeed exalted full of wisdom. You know, if you look, you know, I post all my presentation on that website, successineternity.com, and in it, I added a section, you know, an extra about what is the word mother of the book. Because Allah subhanahu wa said that the Quran, وَإِنَّهُ فِي أُمِّ الْكِتَابِ The Quran is in Umm al-Kitab, in the mother of the book. What is that mother of the book? But Allah subhanahu wa also says, you know, about the Quran something. Umm لَدَيْنَا لَعَلِيٌّ حَكِيمٌ That the Quran is exalted and full of wisdom. And that directly let us say, so, you know, if you can understand the Quran and apply it, you are going to achieve the highest status of knowledge and wisdom. So if you want to achieve, because the Quran, Allah described it, it is a book actually is the best, you know, Ali and Hakim. So if you read it, understand it, and apply it, you will be Ali and Hakim, associated with what you studied. And then the surah offers, you know, a contrast actually between the adornment of this world and the adornment of the earth. To let you focus, okay, here is what people have, but here is what I have for you, if you follow that message that I have delivered for you in this. So if you look to verses, which you listen to it, verses, you know, 33 and 34, uh, you know, Allah Subhanahu says, "Walaula an yakun al nasu ummatan wahida." You know, if weren't the people, all mankind were one community, I would have provided for those who disbelieve in Al Rahman, you know, silver roofs in their houses and silver stairs where they can ascend, and also for their houses doors of silver and the couches of silver on which they could recline and the adornment of gold, yet all of this would have been nothing but the enjoyment of this world and the hereafter with your Lord for the rights. It, you know, this ayah, frankly, it was a little bit confusing to me because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, if people were not one nation, you know, basically one community, I would have provided to the disbeliever all of this gold and silver houses, doors, and so on. What does it mean? So the way I understand, understood, is that if the whole community were disbelievers, one community, if the whole people were disbelievers, I would have given, showered them with all what they want. But why Allah didn't do it? Because that will be temptation to the people who wants to believe. Because if you find out all of the richness for the disbelievers, and then the other people who want to believe do not have anything, suddenly you said, wait a minute, you know, that's not. So to me, the verse actually implies this way, you know, and you can read it and try to interpret it your way. But at least I feel comfortable with this, that if the whole be if the whole nation was disbeliever, Allah would have given them everything. And there is many ayat in the Quran infer this. But because there will be believers, they were not going to be one nation, there will always be disbeliever, and there will be believer. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not want to tempt them, that believer, and confuse them by giving all of the pleasures on this life to the disbelievers. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala comes then and they reveal now the real adornment now, that we, if you stay on the right path and believe what are you going to get with what Allah have prepared for you. 
And you can do this actually, and one time I did it. If you go and say, okay, what is the most expensive house in the world? You know, a most glamorous house in the world. And look at it and say, this is what men have done. You know, imagine now what Allah will do for you. You know, and that gives you, you know, the image directly. There is no way because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, there is nothing, you know, what you what I have prepared for you, you never can imagine it. You know, it's a pleasure that you cannot even think of or imagine. And that's what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talk about those believers, what the type of adornment that they have. And by the way, a lot of time when Allah subhanahu wa speaks to us in the Quran, he speaks in a language that we can understand. Because if Allah subhanahu wa tells us that, you know, I'm prepared for you something you cannot visualize, you cannot imagine. So how Allah is going to write to us something we cannot imagine? Because if he writes something we cannot imagine, we will imagine it. So, so Allah subhanahu wa describe what we have, what he prepared for us in a language can we understand, recognizing that it is really, this is not the real things. The real things is far more glamorous than what actually Allah describes here. Because as I said, Allah describes something, we cannot describe something we cannot imagine, we cannot think of. So, so we have to just recognize when Allah talk about here, enter paradise, you and your spouses in happiness, Trays and the cups of gold will be passed around them. Yeah. Obviously, it must be something even more glamorous than gold. But Allah subhanahu wa gave us the most, you know, that's something that we value, which is gold. That you will have all of the, the food will be served and the cups will be served in gold, which is prohibited for us to do here. But it's allowed for us to have in, in paradise, inshallah. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, there will be in there, there in all that your souls could desire. Yeah. And you can think of all your souls could desire, and your soul's desire will be limited also, because you are limited with what you can see around here. And all what you are, your, uh, the eyes could be, could be like again. And you will abide therein forever. And this is a key part because the, the dormant in this life is transient, is temporary, even if you live a hundred years. But the dormant and the pleasure of the hereafter is, is eternal. So, and then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, This is the paradise which you have been made to inherit because of what you used to do. So, this is something that we all aspire you know, to have and to look for. You know, so, so the, the surah actually telling us, don't be, you know, dazzled and excited about this life adornment. And the, because they are deceiving and they temporary, you know, focus in the better things, which is the eternal things. And the, frankly, if you keep your mind in paradise, everything that happened to you in this life, you should focus on it does it help me to elevate my status in heaven? Because we know heaven, there is levels. So if you face difficulties, am I patient so Allah can elevate your status? If you, you know, or I am grateful for what have given me all the time so Allah can elevate my status. So everything you do, it focus on the, the end. And if you focus in the end, all of the difficulties you face, you will never be embraced by anything. And no difficulties will even, you know, impact you because you always have your sight in a much higher place than what you have, you have here. Then the surah goes actually in the issue, another issue and says, you know, people sometimes use this argument about, you know, why they don't believe. Like when the Prophet ﷺ came to them, they didn't object on the message. They objected on the person. They said, وقالوا, You know, had it just been why this Quran was not sent down to a great man, you know, of the two cities, which is this Mecca type, you know. So it wasn't, you know, you look at the deliverer suddenly become the issue rather than, although they know who is he, his background, and so on, no, but he is not as great as other people, you know. 
and then Allah subhanahu wa address it directly to them. Ahum yaqsimuna rahmat rabbi. Are they the one who's going to divide the mercy of your Lord, the blessing of their Lord? Are they the one who's going to divide it? You know. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we, it is we who have divided between them the livelihood in this world, and we raise the sum of them above other in ranks, so that some may employ others, but the mercy, which is the paradise of your Lord, is better than what they have or accumulated. Whatever wealth they have, there is nothing related to the other one. So the argument is about using this arrogant argument about the position of the person is important. You know, is the key for them to accept. Then Allah respond to it. You know. Then Allah talks about another situation also in the surah that the same argument was used about the position, and this is for say say for Aun and say Musa. You know, what the Pharaoh did, how did he convince his the people in Egypt that he is the Lord that the Musa cannot be. You know, is nothing. He said, وَنَادَ فِرْعَوْنُ فِي قَوْمِ What Fir'aun said? قَالَ يَا قَوْمِ أَلَيْسَ لِي مُلْكُ مَصْرُ مِصْرَ وَهَذِي الْأَنْهَارُ تَجْرِي مِنْ تَحْتِي You know, Fir'aun, so what Fir'aun said to the people? Oh my people, doesn't the dominion of Egypt belong to me? Am I not the king of Egypt? And all of these rivers below under me? Didn't you see? Cannot you see this? Yeah, so now what is he doing? He's saying, oh, look at Moses and look at me. And tell me, whom are you going to follow? And then, and then he continued, Am I, it's not, I am not better than the one related to Prophet Musa, who is despicable and can hardly express himself clearly. You know. And then he said, make the other justification about the importance of money. فَلَوْلَ أُلْقِيَ إِلَيْهُ أَسْوَارَةً and well, why then are not golden bracelet bestowed upon him and an angel came along with him? So that is also the argument about this. The sad part that the Egyptian people get dazzled by this argument and accept it and therefore followed, you know, I said the stupid Egyptian, you know, followed him and this is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, yes. He befooled his people and they followed him with this false argument, this silly argument. Yeah, because I have money, I am a king, then you should follow me and don't follow you know, the true message that came to you. He befooled his people and they obeyed him. And Allah said, they are fasiqi. They became an, a rebellious people. Then Allah said, okay, here is what they got. And why, if you look in the Quran, actually, you find out there is a lot of stories about prophets. We know that these are not all of the prophets, but you find every one of them, when he came to his people, they were doing something wrong. So if you look at what people from Ad were doing, was different than people from Sabun, is different than people from Lot, is different than people from, you know, uh, from Pharaoh. Or from Sayyidina Yusuf, uh, you know, from Yusuf, or or even from uh, Sayyidina, uh, you know, Musa, all of them different. If you if you try to uh, to study the Quran, try to look what was the big crime they were committing. All of them. You know the sad part. If you do this, you yeah. find the out in this time we committing all, not necessarily we. I mean, the people are committing all of the crimes together which is really amazing. All of the crime, all of the crime that Allah destroyed nations before, you know, before us for them, we are doing all of them together. You know, so you, you look and study it in the Quran and you said, you know, Allah subhanahu wa you know, ta'ala, Allah didn't postpone because Allah stopped the now punishing people in this life after the revelation of the Quran. Become now, he said, okay, the, the punishment will be in the hereafter. But you find out people actually going back to the all of the crimes, the transgression that other people would destroy it for, and people are are doing it. Yeah. Then now here is something we have to think about it as a believers, as Muslim. We notice that in the surah, what is saying? It's saying that people justification for rejecting the message 
it is the position of the deliverer of the message and the use that wills and power as a two as a two executions doesn't this imply that muslim for them to truly easy to deliver the message they must acquire wealth and power and position you know because if you deliver as i said you know many times if you are a student is the teacher is going to deliver to convince the student or the student is going to convince the teacher is the owner of the business is going to convince the worker or the worker is going to convince so if you want to deliver the message we as muslim have to aspire actually to achieve the highest position we have to achieve the highest wills we should owe businesses we should advance technology that is the way people measure and allah pointed out so many times that those people all their excuses was this they came and said you know we are not following you because you don't have money you don't have gold you know we are not following you because you are not in that position we are not following you because you can speak good so so directly it come and says well if this is their excuse try to eliminate don't be a cause for their temptation by you being weak poor not cannot speak properly you know don't hold the position so you know so at least you can take that lesson an indirect lesson from it another barrier that you find also for rejecting you know the message is that people do not want to change we find our parents do this we follow them you know who are you to come and let us change so allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bal qalu inna wajadna aba'ana ala ummatin wa inna ala asrin mu'tadi yes they say we found our father following this way and we you know we are guided by following their footsteps the way they are this and that is very difficult to change because if you really think seriously about it if we were born we were blessed if, we, if our parents did nothing for us the one thing they did that they didn't make us you put us in a position to choose we became muslim by birth but imagine if we were born like a hindu or a christian or a jew how many of us can sincerely say i would have become a muslim you know so so in a way yes this is a big a big issue you know you have a person you have to overcome and that's why when you look to like you know Imam Qasim for example when he changed the religion or brother Mujahid whom I talked about you know from Islam in Spanish and change you know it is difficult it has to be something you know inside them that drive them to study and learn to change because it is difficult to do it you know and this is the Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so they always use this excuse we we followed we following our forefathers and وكذلك ما ارسلنا في قبلك من قريه من نذير الا قال مطرفوها ان وجدنا اباءنا على ام the same same similarly we have not seen the warner before you before ibn muhammad or before you you to any town but the wealthy among them will say we found our forefather this way in a certain way and we are indeed following their footsteps so that is you know so <laughs> then they come and say use another excuse and they say you know one excuse we will follow our forefathers then if you tell them oh there is going to be you know allah is going to punish you and so on then they have this argument waqalu law sha ar rahman ma abadna you know now they put the blame now in allah subhanahu wa ta'ala you know they said okay but you know still like us if allah didn't want us to worship them we would not have worshiped them so they said has it if it had been the will of ar rahman of allah we would not have worshiped them this false you know that is that you asking us to do it. then allah subhanahu wa say they have no knowledge you know ma lahum bidhalika min ilm they don't have any knowledge and this this ayat that talk about always this ma lahum ma lahum bidhalika wa inhum illa yakhrusun and they just lying this remove this argument about are we you know is allah forced us to do a certain things you know مشكله القضاء والقدر الله ديكريد ابون مي ذيس ذيرفور اي هاف تو دو ات الله انا سي هاف تو يو نو الله ديكريد اون يو ذيس يو نو سو الله سبحانه وتعالى دونت دونت بليم الله فور اني ثينغ يو نو بيكوز يو هاف نو بروف فور يو جاست لايك يو تراينج تو فايند ان اكسكيوز 
And Allah, and then Allah Subhanahu wa Taala said, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala said, they are lying. You know, they don't have any. Do they have a knowledge to make that claim that Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, you know, would have, you know, allowed them to do this? Do they have even a book? Are we giving them a book to tell them what they're claiming now in this regard? And then Allah Subhanahu wa Taala addresses it. He says, if if you get somebody to argue this. قُلْ أَوَلَوْ جِئْتُكُمْ بِأَهْدَى مِمَّا وَجَدْتُمْ عَلَيْهِ آبَاءَهُمْ How about if I bring you a better guidance than who, the, the guidance or who, what you have found your fathers following? Would you follow it? Would you follow if I prove to you that what I delivering to you is better guidance than what your father was doing? Would you follow it? And most of them will say, إِنَّ بِمَا أُرْسِلْتُمْ بِهِ كَتْرِ No. You know, we totally disbelieve in, in what you have been saying with you. So they, so it's all of the excuses was done to, feel, you know, not because the message is not good, but because they just wanted to reject it. And Allah subhanahu wa says, because of this, because their arrogance, and it's a stupidity and the arrogance, then فَاتَّقَمْنَا مِنْهُمْ فَانْظُرْ كَيْفَ كَانَ عَاقِبَةُ الْمُكَذِّبِينَ Then we punish them. Now look what with the end of those who rejected the messenger. So that we uh, listen. But now we focus on this and we say, you know, okay, this is the kuffar. How about us as a Muslims? Do we really follow certain cultural norms that if you really study it carefully, it is not Islamic. In fact, it could be anti-Islamic, anti the teaching. And we just follow it with a heart to change because our you know, my sheikh used to tell me this is good, or my parent used to do this, you know. It, it really sometimes, I'm telling you, we ourselves have to go back and check the practices we do. Is it really a pure practices? Or, you know, a, a practices that corrupted with cultural norms? Particularly, all of us came from different countries. And if you look, you know, they also tell you this. If you look to certain practice of certain people, first of all, if, if the Egyptian practice certain have a certain practices that they follow, the Pakistani Indian follow certain practices, the you know people from Syria and so on follow so the Arabs, the Arabian people, Arabia follow certain practices, and the other do not follow it, recognize that these are alien to Islam, but it came from their old cultures, and then uh, somehow, you know, cover it with some Islamic justification to follow it. Like, for example, if I tell you what, if you think about the Egyptian culture, the old culture, pre-Islam, what was the key element of it? It's burial of the death. You know, isn't that build the monument, you know, you know, big places to worry, bury, you know, the dead for them? Now you look at the burial system, how Egyptians do the burial system and the practice they do when a person dies. You find out it is related to this. It has nothing to do with Islam. You know, like for example, you go always people in Egypt when they do a burial, they were buried in the ground, there have to be a tomb above ground too. Okay. The second part, after 40 days, they have to have a big gathering, read the Quran in it, and so on. You said, where is the 40? Why is the 40 days come from? You know, and if you go back to the old culture, you find out that the 40 days, that's when the, the when the person died, it takes 40 days before they bury him because they have to go through this mummification process, you know, to do it. And they bury him after 40 days. So they took the 40 days and make it a religious practice. Has nothing to do with it. If you look to Saudi Arabia, what was the culture before Islam? Two things, slavery, and the hatred of women or treatment of women. Okay? Anybody who works in Saudi Arabia, they know they cannot they cannot obviously take you as a slave, but almost as soon as you go work for somebody, what they do, they take your passport and you stop. You cannot do anything. You know. So so in, in this regard, you know, you find I'm sure if you go to you know the Pakistani Indian, you guys can look to your old all the culture before Islam. And see, you will find element adopted in you somehow covered it with Islamic, try to make it Islamic, and and then you know do it. But please, you know, so don't take belittle that a lot of time 
changing, you know, customs can be difficult to change unless you are sincere and you're really serious about this, this relation. Now, the important part when you do that da'wah and do and you get all of this resistance, who are you? You know, what is, you know, what is look at this. The, the argument almost people say, even here, they tell you, okay, if you're telling me Islam can solve all of the problem in the world, why don't uh, why don't you solve your own problems first? You know, look at this. All Muslim countries are really in chaos. So are you telling me if we adopt if we adopt Islam, are we going to fix the problems we have? We we'll fix yours first. So how do you answer this question? You go directly and say, oh, no, no, they do not follow the Islam. <laughs> okay, well, which Islam I'm going to follow then? <laughs> you know, and that is really a difficult position to be in. And we are actually, Allahumma la ja'alna fitnatan lilladina kafaru. Don't Allah make us a trial and test for those who disbelievers. We actually are test for them. Because, you know, if we were the top, Slap you that why we came here. None of us came here if he would have lived comfortably, happy, secure in his own country. If believe me, if one Muslim country becomes so advanced, all of us wants to leave. So let us have the reality of it. So, and this is the issue that we we have, the challenge we have. So you have to do something, you know, a little bit better. But if you can't, then Allah Subhanahu wa says, okay, do your best. Then hold the fast on what we have revealed to you. That is your responsibility. Because at the end of the day, you are responsible for yourself and your family. So, And it's indeed this Quran is a reminder for you and your people and all of you will be questioned about it. And then what happened also how you react to those people who are becoming so resisting to anything, who don't even want to listen to you, and they stay on there, and maybe insult you even, if you try to deliver the message to them. Say, ya Rabbi, inna la And then when the Prophet, and this faces of the Prophet وسلم, when he was delivering the message, you look at the difficulties he have been faced and insults that he have received. Allah, he said, you know, and he said, you know, he's saying, oh, my Lord, these are the people who do not want to believe. Obviously, Allah knows. And then Allah subhanahu wa tell him what? Tell him, be mad from them, curse them. You know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Then forgive them and say peace on you. Then soon they will come. And that tell you, still, even you talk to somebody and you find his resistance, even if he become, you know, aggressive a little bit in his resistance, the end of the day, he said, okay, salamu alaykum, peace be upon you. You know, don't get angry, don't be upset. Because the end of the day, you know, it is his choice anyway. And Allah gave him this freedom of a choice to do it. But one thing which is interesting that recognizing, you know, the importance of money and the position is critical to delivering the message of Islam. This is so important, actually. And the Prophet ﷺ recognize it. How will the Prophet ﷺ recognize it? You all this, it's Uday ibn, Uday ibn Hatim was one of the leader of the tribe. And he was Christian, actually. He was a great tribe, and his father was very, one of those the generous people in, in Arabia. He came to the Prophet ﷺ, and he was, the Prophet ﷺ was delivering the message to him. And he was hesitant to, to accept the message, to become a Muslim. And this is the account is done by Uday himself. You know, this account here. So Uday said, when the Prophet ﷺ saw me, hesitating, don't want to accept the, you know, that I believe in, in him as a messenger in Allah. Then Uday say, what Uday say? A Prophet ﷺ told him, this is Uday narrating now. He said, oh Uday, the Prophet telling him, oh Uday, perhaps what is preventing you from entering this religion is what you see of their poverty. Yeah. By Allah, 
So the, here is the Prophet is telling him, yes, you can see poverty now. By Allah, soon wealth will overflow among them until there is no one left to take it. He said, don't look now. In the future, the money will be so much that you will not find people who wanted it. You know, this nation, Islamic nation, will have so much money beyond your imagination. And perhaps what is preventing you from entering is the large number of their enemy and their small numbers. The other people are more so we, we now have it. You know, look at this. Europe is where is you know, where are Muslim? Look at what the Palestinian have. You know. You know. It's it's fun, it's interesting, but subhanallah. You know, here is the argument is that the people prevent that they see you weak and they see the other part strong. But look to what's happening now. And they said the statistics at least says there is what a 30,000 Palestinian died, there might be more. There is 30,000 convert to Islam. Why? Because they said, what drive those people to stand all of this? Again, it's the most powerful army in, you know, the fifth most powerful army, supported by the first most powerful army. How come those guys last for, now for closer to a year? With a small group of people. That direct said, we want to know what drives them. So, but here, uh, the Prophet is telling Uday, that is perhaps you see our small number and the large number of our enemy. By Allah, we will be so strong in this case that you will hear that a woman will be traveling from Al Qadisiya on her camel to visit the house of Allah in the Kaaba without fear. That means we will become so powerful and so secure that a woman will drive for, will, will ride with her camel from Iraq and come to Mecca fearing nothing. Nothing will harm her. No thief, no crooks, no threats, no enemy. That will become so secure because we are so powerful. And perhaps what's preventing you from entering it is what you see from our and the authority of the others. Perhaps it, what prevented you the power of the Persian and the Roman. Then he said, by Allah, soon you will hear that the white palaces in the land of Babylon will be opened for them. So here, Rasul Hassan directly recognized that yes, you know, smaller number, poverty, lack of power can be a barrier. So the Prophet said, tell him, don't look now, all of this will be resolved. The money will become so vast, the power will become so we become so strong, our number becomes so large. So, and Uday say, after he hearing this, he said, upon hearing this, I accepted Islam. He became now more comfortable. It, you know, this is one thing is a very interesting. It's happened so many times when the Prophet ﷺ spoke about the future, even the kuffar believed in it. You know, here is Uday, here is the Prophet promising the future, telling him about the future. He directly said, he believed, yes, that's going to happen, therefore I should enter into Islam. You know, now there is another story also happened that with this, you know, when the Prophet ﷺ was migrating from Mecca to Medina with Abu Bakr, and they were hiding and so on, you know, the story, who caught them? Suraqa. A disbeliever, because you know, so the Prophet ﷺ told him, Okay, if you can basically, you know, confuse the people of Mecca so they don't follow up, you know, then I will give you a great gift. So Suraqa told him, What are you going to give me? I mean, here is look, the Prophet ﷺ escaping, you know, so he is probably in the weakest position now. He and I said, no, The people from Mecca is offering him a hundred camel to catch him. The Prophet Sallallahu offering him something in the future. And what the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam offering Suraqa? The siwar of Kisra, the bracelet of Kisra, the, the king of the Persian Empire. Wait a minute, you can't even protect yourself. You're telling me you're going to give me the bracelet of the king of, of Persia? You know. And at that time, actually, the Persian was already victorious over the Roman. 
So they owned Iraq and, the, you know, the, basically the Jerusalem and everything. They controlled it and obviously control Yemen. You know what Suraka did? He said, can you write it down? <laughs> you know, I mean, it's really amazing that in this situation, the Prophet ﷺ was so, they believed in him. Even a kafir believed in him. Said, can you write? And the Prophet ﷺ wrote it down. Abu Bakr wrote it down and the Prophet ﷺ gave him his stamp on it. And when the Muslim won from, and you know the story, when the Muslim became victorious over Kisra and all of the gold of Kisra came, Surah came to Sayyidina Umar and said, I wanted a bracelet. This is what they mean, you want the bracelet. He said, the Prophet gave it to me. And he still had the paper, or whatever that part of. That tell you, and this is why, so it's not strange that when the Prophet was, was still in Uday, this is what is going to happen, that this, you know, it, it will not happen. It happened. And he believed in it, directly accepted, and that's why he believed in Islam. The question is, when promised people, Jannah, to believe us. Then Uday actually came back and he continued and he said, you know, that two things, I have witnessed two things and the third will come, will come. I saw the houses of, you know, Babel, Persia, you know, actually was opened for the Muslims, you know, because Babel is in Iraq and Iraq was part of the Persian Empire. And then he's, he said, I saw also that the woman can go from the Qadisiyya to the Hajj without fearing anything. And he said, I, I expected to see the third, which is that the money becomes so large that nobody will take it. And we know this happened during Sayyidina Amr ibn Aziz, when they come with Zakah, nobody would take it, you know, in this, in this regard. So, so that tell you that, you know, yes, you know, Poverty of Muslims, weakness of Muslims, you know, lack of authority can be a barrier. And this surah say it because people value these things. So, and that frankly become then something that we should strive, particularly our kids should strive to, you know, let our kids, because we, we probably in our case, whatever we achieved, they achieved. But our kids can become the Nobel Prize winner, the owner of the biggest companies, you know, who knows, maybe they become the president of the country also, and so on. So there is nothing to hold them back. If Allah with them and they are sincere, I'm sure they will achieve their, their best, best goals. Then, you know, so in this regard, you know, and, and the, frankly, why the Prophet ﷺ was so confident? Because he truly believed that in the hand of Allah is everything. And therefore, if Allah promised that he is going to make him victorious, he has no doubt that's going to happen. You know, the question is, do we believe? You know, we, we can go through different stories to show how people actually the sincerity of belief on it. You know, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say, If people have just believe and have taqwa, would have showered them with all of the blessing. Now, tell me, is all of the Muslim world are suffering from poverty? Even Saudi Arabia, the people in is suffering from poverty. Egypt is suffering. But Allah promises, if only if they have belief and taqwa, I'm going to send them. You know, why we don't do belief? But this is when, but the Prophet ﷺ believes. Why? Because Allah Subhanahu says, وَهُوَ الَّذِي فِي السَّمَاءِ إِلَاهٌ وَفِي الْأَرْضِ إِلَاهُ وَالْحَكِيمُ وَالْحَكِيمُ Allah is the Lord or the God of the heavens and the God of the earth. Allah is in control of what's in heaven and the earth. So if you believe in him, he will deliver to you all of the promises. But if you wish you wash on your belief, he's not going to deliver because Allah Subhanahu knows what is in your heart too, you know. And then Allah subhanahu says, you know, and then Allah ended in this verse, you know, الله الله he said the end of the day, يعني, blessed be the one to whom belong the kingdom of heaven and the earth and all that between, with whom is the knowledge of the hour and to whom all will be returned. All of us will return one day to him and he will hold us accountable for what we have.
And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give what severe warning to those who rejected the message by saying, أَفَنَضْرِبُ عَنْكُمِ الذِّكْرَ صَفْحًا إِنْ كُنْتُمْ قَوْمًا مُسْرِفِينَ Shall we withdraw the message? Uh, this, is a, this is a very interesting verse too. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, shall we basically remove the message, the, the revelation from you, you know, and disregard you because you are transgressor? And that is a threat that Allah subhanahu wa says, for people who transgress so much, Allah subhanahu wa will take from them the, even the guidance. There will be no guidance for them. We'll never give them opportunity to be guided and let them go to their increase in their transgression in this one. And this is, you know, and this is very threatening, actually, statement, because we all make mistakes. And we want Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to always, we seek his guidance to correct us, to help us correct. But if Allah remove, if we transgress so much, Allah will never guide us. Will never give the us opportunity even to be guided. So it is becoming, but you make mistakes, you repent and so on, Allah will always help you. Will give you some difficulties so you can go back to him. But the worst, if, if you make Sins, 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 and you see no punishment from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You'll be scared for your sin because Allah gave up with you, you know, in that case. But the other part which is important in this surah, <coughs> you know, those people whom Allah condemn as disbeliever, did they reject Allah? Did they not believe that Allah is the creator of the heavens and earth? Because a lot of time people say, oh, if I believe, I'm fine. Well, no, you are not fine. Because Iblis believed in Allah. Believe, did, 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 did Iblis worship any other God besides Allah? No. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, If you ask those people who disbelieve, if you ask even the Christian, who created the heavens and the earth, they will never tell you Jesus created them. You know, or Buddha created them, or whatever. They said, Allah, God created them. You know, so they believe in that Allah is the creator. You know, man khalaqahu, who created you? They will say, Allah created me. So, so the issue is, you know, just believing in Allah, you know, as a creator is not sufficient, you know, for, for success in the hereafter. It must be demonstrated and manifested by obedience to his commands. You cannot say, I worship Allah just by believing in him. No, my friend. You know, you know what is a worship of Allah, true worship of Allah? That you sell yourself, yourself and your wealth to Allah. That you become slave, your money belonging to him, you yourself. Allah, what Allah says, in Surah Al-Tawbah, Inna Allah ashtara min al mu'minina and fusahum wa amwalahum bi anna lahum al-jann Allah purchased from the believer their self their basically all their life and their wealth that they have for us if so worship is what you sell yourself to Allah yourself and your wealth you become enslave enslave yourself to Allah Allah doesn't have to book, to tell you that you are my slave no you make yourself a slave to Allah, which means how that translated to full obedience to his commands. You know, so. Allahumma salli wa sallim wa barik ala Sayyidina Muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi. Allahumma adina fi man hadaytu wa afina fi man afayt. Wa barik Allahumma lana fi ma ataytu wa qina wa asrif anna sharra ma qatayt. Fa innaka ya rabbana taqli bil haqqi wa la yuhda alayt. Allahumma qilna bi rahmatika fi ibadika al-salihin. اللهم اخرجنا من ظلمات الجهل والوهم الى نور العلم اللهم علمنا ما ينفعنا وانفعنا بما علمتنا وزدنا علما اللهم اجعلنا ممن يستمعون القول فيتبعون احسنا اللهم اكفنا بحلالك عن حرامك وبطاعتك عن معصيتك وفضلك عن من سواك اللهم بفضلك ورحمتك عليك لدين الحق والدين اللهم انصر الاسلام وعز المسلمين يا اكرم الاكرمين او الله spread your mercy upon us shower us with your blessings increase our knowledge grant us forgiveness and they reward us with the company of the prophets in the Firdaus al-A'la. O oh Allah, forgive our parents and all our friends and relatives who have passed away. O oh Allah, make their graves a garden from heaven and grant them the Firdaus al-A'la. O oh Allah, we have many of our friends and relatives who are sick. 
we have our son Ma'raj, our daughter Aisha Wani, Aisha Wani, our the grandson of our brother Azam, and many others. Oh Allah, grant all of them full and speedy recovery. Oh Allah, we know that there is no cure but yours. Oh Allah, grant them a cure that leaves no ailment or injury. Oh Allah, guide our children, protect them, and make them righteous. Oh Allah, we have our brethren, particularly those in Palestine, who are under oppression and justice. Oh Allah, they are facing barbaric enemies, unjust world, and complacent Muslim nation. Oh Allah, heal their trauma, protect their helpless, grant them lasting peace and, prosper and prosperity. Oh Allah, grant them victory and fulfill their needs. Oh Allah, we ask you every name you have elected for yourself, that none of us leave this gathering, but his pains have been relieved, his worries have been removed, his debts have been paid, his weaknesses have been concealed, his sins have been forgiven, and his needs have been fulfilled. Subhanallah wa bihamdih, adada khalqih, warida nafsih, wazinat arshih, wa midada kalimatih. Subhanallah wa bihamdih, adada khalqih, warida nafsih, wazinat arshih, wa midada kalimatih. Subhanallah wa bihamdih, adada khalqih, warida nafsih, wazinat arshih, wa midada kalimatih. Wal asr, inna al-insana lafi khusr. إلا الذين آمنوا وعملوا الصالحة وتواصب بالحق وتواصب بالصبر وآخر دعوانا أن الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على خير المرسلين اللهم صل وسلم وبارك على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته